Hey there, uh, this is Paul again. Um, tonight we have a really, I guess, fun kind of thing. Uh, it depends on what you call fun. Um, but we just recently bought a new replacement camera uh, for our uh, one of our older ones that has finally kicked the bucket. Um, so this time we went with a really nice camera. Um, pretty top of the line for amateur class but you know kind of not uh, professional quite as much but this is what we have it's the ASI 6200 Pro monochrome and so we're gonna set that up tonight um, we have a seven position filter wheel and seven different filters that we are going to put into it so I'm going to go through and set up and show you kind of how uh, we put the camera together uh, put the filter wheel together and all of the filters inside of there um, and give it a test run on a computer just to make sure everything's running right make sure it's taking pictures uh, make sure the filter wheel's set up right and moving like it's supposed to um, so we're going to do that tonight so you can get an idea like if you're looking for one of these um, or even something similar uh, a lot of these ZWOs and stuff uh, are pretty easy to set up and um, pretty similar to set up to this one, so it's not going to take very much uh, of a switch to go to something else. Um, so uh, you'll be able to kind of get an idea of how these are all put together. Um, so let's get started. So what I like to make sure now is that I've been running some kind of air cleaner uh, for the first you know, half hour or so to help clean up some of the stuff in the air. Um, you can pick them up for fairly cheap these days. Uh, so it's kind of good to do that. That way you're not getting some uh, dust and stuff falling onto this when you're doing it. You want to kind of keep it as clean as possible. But I'm going to carefully open up this box for the camera. And I'm going to do this kind of in a step-by-step -step way. So you can find, kind of follow along and uh, give you an idea of what's going on. So, USB cable, USB cable of another type, USB cable of uh, that same type, um, camera in the bag, and then you have some various adapters here, depending on how you need to set stuff up. Looks like you. I send you a uh, Allen wrench with that and a quick guide. So I'll set that aside. All right, so open up the camera. You also want to make sure your hands are clean when you're dealing with this, especially with those. You don't want to put any extra marks or anything on them. Pop that out. So this is also my first time opening these up. So see what's going on. Okay. Bag down. You can put that on your table or whatever. Use it as kind of a shield against stuff. Um, it's a pretty neat looking camera. So there's your power. We do have a power bar with this because we are planning on running the filter wheel through it and running the cooling on here. Um, so you can't run the cooling just off of USB just because there's not enough power coming through your USB to do that. Um, so USB in to probably a, from here into there. This goes into the computer. Pretty big heat sink that they have here. Looks like it's basically this entire section of the whole camera right there. This is there dust cap. And screw that off. So this is a full frame sensor. This one's really cool because it's a 64, 64 megabyte sensor. So um, the reason why we got this one is because it has that large sensor but because it also has really high sensitivity so it's about 80 percent quantum efficiency on this one. So that's a really good um, for a CMOS. This is probably one of the most advanced CMOS cameras that um, are available for the uh, consumer market. Um, so that's really cool. It also has a pretty 
good well depth so you can actually get about I think it was 51,000 uh, electrons on there for the well depth and if you uh, apparently when you um, bin this one that well depth increases with the binning so that's pretty cool too uh, pop open the filter wheel see what we have in here so this is a seven position filter wheel um, so you can see kind of how much larger it is than a little five position um, the reason why we got a seven is because we want to use it with uh, hydrogen alpha oxygen and sulfur as well as the standard uh, LRGB so um, we did go through different two different companies for these just because the ZWOs were so much so far back on back order and I wanted to get these things set up as quickly as possible and there might be a little bit of focusing difference between these but you're usually not using these at the same time as the H alpha and stuff um, so it's not that big of a deal um, so these are all two inch filters for those uh, let's look in here and see what we have um, M54 to M48 F-2 okay that might come in handy at some point USB so this USB is like really long so we probably won't use this one to go in the camera because they'll just be basically you know about a foot away from each other so we might use one of these shorter ones that were included with the camera uh, looks like another adapter ring another adapter ring uh, some spare screws likely for putting the adapters on right here um, gonna need some for those these are all the small ones that you'll actually put the filters on with if you're using unmounted filters um, but we're using mounted filters so those are just going to be screwing right into the the mounting holes there um, looks like there's so some uh, unmounted filters will have little gaps and even some mounted filters will have gaps on the round around the edges so these little shrouds it looks like to put around them to help block the light from getting around them and causing uh, different weird reflections and stuff on there um, so if you're using unmounted or even if you can see that the um, filters have some kind of uh, gap in between the sides you'll want to use those with them um, so what we're gonna do first is likely we're gonna start by mounting the filters into the filter wheel I'm gonna have to get a Phillips head screwdriver so what I'm gonna do real quick is just look through the quick guides just to see if there's anything in here that I don't really know about these so yeah connect to your computer guide camera filter wheel don't open that one down there apparently power supply we have that over here diagram without EFW diagram with EFW but the off-axis guider is on there with that one we won't be using an on off-axis guider on this one though um, we have a bunch of filter diagrams that'll be helpful so we'll want to look at those to figure out where those go the rest of these are just the software connections and setting up so we won't go over that so basically it's just one page that is important for us right now uh, nothing there oh just found that they sent a screwdriver with this that's handy so looks like what we're going to need is that number nine four and then five and then eight so number ten is going to be this number nine is going to be 42 to 42 adapter that's likely one of these I'll have to try them and find out.
have everything we need here. And be sure not to blow on any of these surfaces, because you don't want spit ruining everything right at the get-go. I'm move this out of the way since we don't need it. Always want to put these in a spot where you won't knock them off your table and you'll be able to see where they are the whole time. down so these ones are labeled so you want to figure out which ones you want to put in here first usually I would go L R G B H alpha oxygen and then sulfur <sighs> so we got a little bit of dust in there <sighs> okay so don't blow on the glass surfaces that way you don't spit on those. So we're going to get these set in place. And so we're going to start with our Optolong CCD filters. Um, I was pretty surprised at these um, because they came with really no dust on them. And this is like one of the first filters that I've ever pulled out of the box where there wasn't dust or fingerprints or some other junk on them. So that made me a little bit happier. So be sure not to touch any of the glass surface. You'll be just touching around the rings. This is the nicer part about having the uh, mounted glass on there too, is that it's just a little bit easier to handle. You don't really have to worry so much about the uh, touching the glass at all, because it's all kind of there. Let's go until it gets, until it stops. You don't want to go too hard, because then it might be difficult getting these out. Okay, so after much looking, it seems that I was wrong on something, but my camera decided to stop recording right before I started putting the filters in. So we'll talk about those really quick. And hopefully it decides not to crap out on us again. Because that's not cool, man. But I was trying to figure out how to mount this to this um, using adapters like these things here. But after looking around online, I found one instance of it looking like the filter wheel itself attaches directly to the camera. That makes a lot of sense. So that means I have to take this all off. talk about the filters first. So, as I tried mentioning, these are all labeled 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. It's important to remember that, but um, I always kind of keep a standard for all of our cameras and everything um, in that uh, I always go L, R, G, B, H alpha, oxygen, and then sulfur. So L, R, G, B, and then kind of like a alphabetical order with those ones. Um, when you're installing these, you need to make sure that you don't put them too tightly because if you put them too tight, it actually can get hard to remove them. You sh shouldn't ever have to worry about them like working their way out because once they're in there, they're pretty well set. So don't worry about that aspect of it. <sighs> so um, now that we've talked about that, you know, just screwing those in one at a time, uh, I mentioned that I enjoy or I actually like the 
um, the mounted filters better just because you can handle them a little bit easier you can you know yeah stuff like that um, but if you don't have mounted filters you'll actually set those in place in the same spot but they'll be kind of free but you'll actually use um, these little baffles where did those go you'll use these baffles and you'll put those baffles over the the edges of um, the filters and then they screw in here using uh, not these silver screws but some little black ones and those hold them in place and you want to make sure that you're not doing one and then the other and then you're kind of tilting the, the thing up like this you want to make sure they're parallel to the rest of the stuff in here that way you don't have any weird reflections and um, different focus points and stuff across your imaging chip so be careful on that so now that we talked about that I'm going to set this aside and we're going to do this. Okay, round 35. Um, so what I found was that um, if you're going to keep the tilt plate on, where did I put that thing? I haven't taken it off. If you're going to take the tilt plate on, um, so what you have to do is take the filter car carousel out of the filter wheel and then you're going to use the internal mounting bolts right here on the filter wheel to mount directly onto this. And so you can actually use it to mount onto the tilt plate right there. But we're going to try something really quick and uh, see if we can take the tilt plate off because we're not going to need it so much on this. So we're going to take these off here. So just so you know, every thing in astronomy is always kind of a search for the truth just like Mulder and Scully always said I'm gonna put that up here tilt plate comes off and there are some more bolt holes right here that we can try with this so if you remove that tilt plate then you get a you know a couple millimeters of back focus so you have a little bit better play on your uh, telescope so let's see if this fits Yes, that's going to work just fine right there. So if you have the tilt plate, it will be these inner um, bolt holes. If it's on the out, if it's not the tilt plate, it will be on these outer bolt holes. So we're gonna put this on in that manner because uh, we shouldn't need that tilt plate too much. So we're gonna throw this on. Gonna find the right hole. For that one, and then get this one over here aligned, and try not to spit on your sensor. It does have a window in front of it, so you're not going to actually get the sensor, but the less you have to clean, the better. So just like everything else, kind of start these in there, but don't put cinch them down yet, just because you want to get everything aligned in there just right in the bolt holes and have a little bit of room if you need it. Okay, once you get that last one, you can go ahead and tighten everything down. Just finger tight, you know, like the little two finger there. No wrist action. Just because you don't want to put them in there too tight, especially with expansion and contraction. They could end up seating themselves in there even more than you want. So now that that's in place, we're going to tip it down like this. Because once we put this in there, it's going to want to you know, tip over anyway. So may as well pre-tip it. So now that those are all in, you can see how four holes are in there. Let's see if we put it on the right side. Yeah, so I wanted to make sure to match this to the same section there. So we're going to do that. I put this back in. Got the holes there. So it doesn't really, I don't think it's going to matter which of these holes you put it in because the sensor for it is based off of some tick mark or something likely on here that it picks up, probably on the bottom or something. So you shouldn't have to worry. And be sure to put the right little screws back in there. So three tiny ones.
those in too tight, but make sure they're tight enough. You don't want to strip them out either, so that's why you also don't want to go too tight. So once those are in there, then you can add your plate back on. I'm putting all your do hickadoos back in here. too tight yet. Try not to drop your screwdriver. Cause then you'll have to pick it back up. something funky there and then what we're going to do is we're going to make sure our filters are not scraping when this is moving because then they can get hung up you can burn a motor out or something or you can start scratching stuff but it looks like these are good so you can kind of move those along try not to touch the actual filters themselves just go along those and if you hear some dragging noises or something and you either have one of these in too far, you don't have the right set, or they're not far in enough. But this one's not making any noise, so we are good to go. All right, and then we want to put on this thing here. This is your two inch adapter that fits into your telescope. And so we'll stick that on here. This is something else you'll want to double check. Sometimes those go down too far and they'll scrape. You want to be careful. Yeah, no scraping on this one. So that one's good. Alright, so now you can see our finished product here. So we have our camera, we have our filter wheel, USB, USB. That way it's only going to here um, and not going over this way or going too far around this. You don't want to block this airflow at all. You don't want to block airflow coming in here just to keep, you know, help things flow a lot better. So we're going to check the length of these, see which one is best. little guys. Okay, so that's not too bad. So that pops right in there. And this still has a fair amount of length to it. So we'll probably want to put some stuff on there for that. Just because we don't want it getting caught on anything, so we have this big full length of stuff there that's hanging out. So yeah, we want to maybe get some little wire ties or something and just kind of fold this up like that or something and just kind of sit it on there like there. That way it's not getting caught on things and it's not, you know, yanking stuff out. Um, we don't want that at all. So I'll figure out where I have some of those and then put them on. Okay, so I think that's all for this. Um, not a bad little setup. Took a minute to figure out. You also don't want to set it down while that is in there because if you put it here and this gets torqued, like this, and then you're going to ruin the USB inputs 
So you actually want to remove those if you're doing anything like this. Always keep your caps on when you're not using stuff. And try to keep track of all your caps. That way you can always protect your stuff. But cool little setup there. Um, and then we'll hook it up to a computer and see. Uh, clean up this mess first and then uh, we'll get moving. Okay, so we're going to try to hook up the camera and filter wheel to this laptop. Um, just so you know, this is a Surface Pro 3, so not the newest thing, but still running Windows 10. already have the ASCOM platform installed, and so we're going to go online, find the drivers we need, get things plugged in. So these Surface Pros only have a single USB, so it's good that this camera actually runs as a USB hub for some of its uh, for some of its peripherals, I guess you can say. Um, so we'll get those hooked up. So I want to hook the camera in first. We don't need it powered just to have it turned on, but we're going to go to ZWO website and look for the camera drivers there. And I'm going to do this with you. That way you know all the little steps that I had to take. So you don't want to go to anywhere but CWO's site. Never search for something like ZWO drivers and then get them from a third party because you might be picking up some um, not good things. And if your cat decides to come over and say hi, kindly ask them to leave. Looks like that takes you directly there. Um, we want to find the camera that we have, which is the ASI 6200. Doesn't seem to be listed directly on their stuff. go to this because I think that's the actual site. Right, there we go. So now we can go to support software. Looks like we are overexposing. Turn that down some more. Okay, and since I'm running Windows 10, if you want to do download ASI drivers, must be installed to use these cameras. We're going to unplug it for now, because you sometimes don't want to install stuff until it's all there. So let's download that. And it's only 4.5 megabytes, so it's pretty quick. So they have software of their own that you can download to run the cameras. Um, you're welcome to do that or get a third party. They also have ASCOM drivers. So ASCOM is a platform of common driver language. So everybody kind of follows these kind of preset um, uh, driver ways, I guess, is to say it. Um, that way, uh, anybody using this platform will be able to use any of the drivers on there, and it's fairly easy. So we'll actually connect those. So we have the the filter wheel, so we're going to download that. We're going to download the SI cameras. You need to make sure that your ASCOM platform is updated properly. 
Um, I think the latest one might be buggy. I don't know if they've installed it since somebody else said it has some problems. But if you download it and you're having some problems, maybe go back to a uh, previous set. And that's all we're going to do for now. Um, looks like there's other sources here, Sharp Cap, Fire Capture, Janika, Prism, other imaging third-party softwares that run these kind of cameras. So while that one's downloading, I'm going to install the ca ASI camera driver. And since we have another ASI camera, those were already on here, but it looks like it has updated drivers. So you want to update those if you have them or not. Then we'll do the filter wheel. And then the ASCOM camera driver. Sometimes if you have both drivers installed on some types of cameras, it doesn't like having both of them installed, so if you're having problems, maybe just install one or the other, and not both. Alright, so now that those are there, so we should be able to plug the camera in now, and Windows should detect it. One way to check that it is there is to pull up your device manager. And then look for it in here. So this is where you can find all of your stuff. Um, so you can check under cameras. Nope. Um, imaging devices. ZWO ASI 6200mm Pro Camera. That's what we're looking for. So now that that is there, let's try to plug the filter wheel in. Let's see if it detects it. Sounds like it's powered and rotating. So that's probably going to be down here in... Maybe serial bus controllers, system devices, could be this legacy device that we see here. Printers, printers, Q, not a network adapter, of course. Close all of those. Computer display, firmware, human interface, maybe. We will find it. It could just be a standard USB input device. I think it said on their website it's an HID device. So that's probably where it is. So if we look here, USB HID devices do not need native drivers. So that's what it would be under is right here, human interface device. And we can actually unplug it and see what disappeared. So yeah, it was one of these standard USB devices down here. So that's how you know it's installed. And then you put it back in and then it shows up again. So now you know they're both connected. All right, so I'm gonna plug this into power, but before I do that, I probably wanna unplug the USB just so it doesn't cause some kind of voltage jump anywhere through there. Then I'll plug the camera into the wall power, and then plug the camera in. Fan will start going. And then plug the 
filter wheel in. Okay. Now what we're going to do, I run everything on Maxim DL for all of our telescopes and stuff. So we are going to do that on here. We're going to open up our camera. I'm going to do set up camera. And let's see if ASI is in here. Nope. So we're just going to do ASCOM. Advanced. ASI camera one. It's likely that one. Let's go to properties. Okay, preset manual. So it has on this one. There's a couple different things. Uh, lowest read noise is also the um, lowest dynamic range, but highest dynamic range is also the highest read noise. Unity gain means it's kind of like putting both of those in the same thing. Um, gain is going to be a hundred if you want lowest read noise. It's going to be zero if you want highest dynamic range. So we're going to just try unity gain. So it looks like it puts it at zero. And this is your camera right here. Um, if you plug another AESI camera in here as a tracking, just got to make sure that's on there. You set everything differently. Um, anti do. We'll just keep that on for now. Let's check the advanced. So now you have gain and offset. Um, so we'll check those out. Please turn down USB limit if no image was obtained. So that's likely a transfer rate or something. I'll have to look that up for later. Offset is, uh, we'll have to look that up too. See what this is. So we'll change it to unity gain. So offset is 50, gain is zero. And we'll just see what we get on here. So let's hit okay, hit okay, hit okay. We want to set up a filter here, so that means we come down here to probably ASCOM again, because um, it's not up in any of the others. And then we'll do advanced, and then we'll do ZWO filter one. Check this. EFW ID Z ID is a zero. Okay, so that is which of those? Unidirectional, meaning it can go one direction or the other. So if you're just going back from uh, luminance to red, luminance to red, it, instead of going all the way around every time, it'll go back and forth and recalibrate if they're not being centered properly. So we'll hit OK there, hit OK there, hit OK there. But before we do that, we want to set our filters, so L, R, G, B. We want to set that as H, A, O, I, I. And then S, 2. So and then you set those, and then you can go through them normally. So make sure those are all set properly, and then hit OK. Let's see if we can connect. All right, camera is connected. So now we can set the cooler on the camera to make sure that is working. Um, let's just do on and see what our ambient temperature is. 23. This has an amp, the delta of about 30. So you want to go 30 from 23. It means we actually want to go up to about zero because you want to provide a little bit of leeway in case it gets slightly warmer or cooler. So it looks like that's working. So let's go to expose and let's just do a one second exposure. And let's see what it looks like with no calibration, no dark frame. Let's see what we get. So this is a 62 megapixel camera so it's going to take a little bit of time to download but that was actually pretty quick for how big this image size is. 25%, it's not small enough. 12.5%. So you can see, maybe you can see that on here. There's a lot of hot pixels on there. Let's see, go. Maybe right here. Lots of hot pixels on that. We'll go to high 
And you can see it's actually pretty clean for um, its uh, times, but let's go up to and do like a 10 second exposure. Might get some light leak, but yeah, whatever. This is just a test to see how things work. So temperature sensor is at zero, that's where we want it. Well, set points at zero, set temperature is at 10, so it's still going down. Ten second exposure, downloading still, and bam. You know, for 10 second exposure, that is actually really clean. I'm pretty surprised with that. So if we look at our information window over here, so our pixels maximums are around 500 for background noise. Let's do an area and get an idea of what this area has. So our maximum pixel value is 11,910. Our average is 500. That's pretty decent. Um, I've seen much worse, but I've seen a little bit better, but on much more expensive cameras. Um, so not bad. Uh, standard deviation total. Yeah. So let's try this with a dark frame. So if everything is actually dark, then it should come out with a fairly black and uniform looking image. the dark frame. So with these cameras they don't have an actual shutter on them so you'll have to cover your camera or your uh, telescope to do the dark frames. Um, or if you have a spare spot in your filter wheel you can actually put a little black disc in there and that takes care of it for you. So let's see what this looks like now. So our minimum is 0, maximum is 348, and our average is 99.99. It's pretty good. So let's play with their stuff here. Yeah, pretty decent noise handling on this. Zoom in. Looks like there are some over calibration because our sensor temperature wasn't matching properly. So, as soon as that gets down to the proper temperatures and stuff, then you'll stop seeing as many of these black dots. So, the little black dots mean that when you took your. You can see me a little better there. When you took your. Um, dark frame it was at a different temperature than your regular frame and so it took out more information than what was actually there but part of this is like in some spots there's not the same amount of noise there every exposure that's why you take average exposures and uh, take many exposures and average them um, over a, all of them and then you can kinda get out the noise that's always there so it's waiting for it to warm up. That usually takes a little while though. But it looks pretty good for a CMOS camera especially. So everything's working. Um, see if we can change. So if we disconnect and go to camera. So if we do lowest read noise, so gain is 100, offset 50. Let's see what that one looks like. So we'll get those all back on, reconnect. Turn our cooler back on. So you can see it went up 5 degrees just by that 
few seconds we were off. Okay, we're going to let that get down again just a little bit and then see. Exposure. Let's do a dark frame on that. It'll be a little bit different than a real example when the temperature sensor is, or the sensor temperature is normal between them all. But it should be pretty close because it's still trying to catch up to the temperature being warmer. So it'll be within a couple tenths of a degree. Okay, so definitely you can see in the graph right here, it's not being spread as much. So we have 12, 13 for a maximum. Average is 100. Standard deviation is 8. Not too bad. Yeah, it's pretty good. This will definitely do some damage to space once we get it out there. So we'll wait a few minutes and let that get down and see what it's like when it's actually at zero. It might go farther down if the cooler power is uh, not running super high. But it'll be interesting setting this up on a telescope and uh, getting things running. Alright, so it's kind of stabilized at negative 0.6. I'm sure it'll raise back up within time, but I'm impatient, so we're just going to see what this looks like at around zero. And since your temperature is different, you actually need to reset your auto dark because it will not come out properly. It looks like we're at point negative point two. So let's take another one. It's at forty percent, so it's pretty good. Um, you could probably go, you know, five or ten degrees more than what it was there. Uh, but you never want to ru really run above 80% because you want some ability to catch variations in temperature and stuff if it gets slightly warmer and taking images and stuff like that will actually cause the electronics to warm up so you want to be able to control that too okay so now we're down to 410 for the maximum which is really good an average of 100 a minimum of 0 so yeah pretty good um, impressive, especially for a CMOS. But if we look at what the range looks like, pretty black, nothing really, no uh, hot pixels really popping out there. So that means less noise in your main images, at least from the camera. Doesn't look like there's really any noise from like the sensor electronics, like the structure and stuff, so that's pretty good. I'll zoom in a little bit there. Up 
bit more. A little bit right there. You can start seeing some. Pretty good. It's as good as any that we've had. So, yeah, the temp temperature sensor is zero. Let's do, let's check to make sure the filter wheel works. Go through all the filters. Sounds like they're working. It's not very loud, so that's good. All right, I think we are all set. Everything looks good, sounds good, and functions good. So there you go, so that's how you set up uh, ASI 6200MM Pro with a EFW 2 inch filter wheel and LRGB HA oxygen and sulfur images or filters. So get that starting to warm up a little bit. Sometimes it's a lot better to start warming it up so it cools off so it doesn't get you know, some temperature issues there but uh, as soon as that's done we'll just disconnect and call it good. So hope everybody learned something, um, had a little insight into this camera setup, uh, but yeah, feel free to post anything, any questions that you might have um, about the camera itself or the setup, and I'll do my best to answer what you got. Alright, have a good night. Bye-bye.